Hi everyone and welcome to chapter 6, Work, Energy and Power. So the words work and energy and power are in use, you know, in the everyday English language, but they have a variety of different meanings. In physics, however, they have very precise meanings. And the word work, for example, has a very definitive interpretation. Um, you know, the vagueness of the term work in everyday speech may cause problems for some students um, when it comes to giving a precise scientific definition. So let's make sure we take care to explain properly what this precise definition is. So here we see the definition of work. Work is said to be done when a force moves the point of application, that is to say where the, 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 the point on object where a force is being applied. So when a force moves its point of application in the direction in which the force acts. So you can see here that we are saying that this is a vector because we're talking about uh, movement in a certain direction. So for work to be done, there must be a component of the force that is parallel to the displacement. So let us say for the sake of argument that um, you are, a force is acting from right to left. And this allows an object to move from point A, point A point B. So in a situation, so you were here initially and then you slowly moved over to point B due to the, due to the presence of this force. So now you have worked, uh, excuse me, you have moved in the direction of the force. So we would say in the situation like this, that work is done by the force. The work is done by the force. Now, what happens if the reverse is true? You still went from point A to point B, but there is, but the force being applied was in the other direction. So you move despite the application of the force, right? So in a situation like that, um, let's copy this over here, the statement, um, the work is done by the force and we put it here for a second. Well, in this case, actually, work is in fact not being done by the force, but rather on the force. So what would be a good example of this latter case? Well, that would be friction. Um, so you are moving forward despite the fact that there's a force acting on you in the opposite direction. So you're working against the force. Uh, you're doing work uh, on the force of friction, essentially, in order to move forward. Um, and our initial example, when you know your motion was uh, in the same direction as the force itself, the perfect example of that is gravity. You know, wherever the gra gravity is actually uh, pulling you towards, that's where you move towards. So what we will find is that uh, the unit uh, of uh, work is defined as joule, which is denoted by capital letter uh, J, uppercase J. So essentially, when uh, one the way you can visualize a joule is uh, uh, one Newton force moves moves uh, the point of application. So I'll call it point of application by one meter. So a joule is a Newton meter. So let's write that again. One joule equals one Newton meter. I also want you to think about this in very general sense when you're calculating work, you know, why it is important to, to understand whether the force or, and the displacement are parallel parallel or not. Well, think about it this way. You can push a car horizontally relatively easily, but if you want to lift a car off its wheels, much more work has to be done. You know, like you might have to use a machine or you might have to use a jack or something like that. So you need to understand which way the force is going to be applied and what has to be overcome. And uh, that that's going to tell, tell you, you know, how easy or hard it is um, to uh, to move something and how much work essentially goes into moving uh, an object. So let us look at an example to uh, solidify this concept. So let's say you are standing at point A and you are going to lift up, I don't know, a wheelbarrow or something, um, which is full of bricks. Um, when you try and lift it up, if, if you imagine you're never able to quite lift it up, you know, in a, in a vertical kind of direction, that never happens. The, the force is always kind of at an angle here, right? So, um, let us say for the sake of argument, you've applied a force of uh, 40, uh, excuse me, 540 uh, Newtons, right? 
And as a result of your efforts, you were able to uh, move this wheelbarrow uh, 30 meters in the, um, in, in the in, 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 in towards the right-hand side. That's the direction of the motion. So what's the work that you've done here? Well, quite simply, work should be um, the, the force times the displacement that's applied, right? Um, so what is the displacement um, that you've applied? The displacement is 30 meters. That part is pretty straightforward. What about the force though? Well, you've applied 540 newtons, but remember what we said, we have to get the, the component of this force that is parallel to the direction of the motion. So the way you would get that is simply 540 times cosine of 75 degrees, right? So if you then multiply these two numbers together, uh, so I'm gonna write that out one more time for you, 540 uh, cosine 75 degrees uh, times 30 meters, uh, you're going to find that the amount of work that you did to move this wheelbarrow is 4,200 joules. So that uh, it brings us to a more general statement, essentially, uh, that that if you want to if you want to write a statement for how much work is done, uh, it's equal to the force times cosine theta times I'll call it x, where cosine theta, so theta is angle of uh, the force with the um, direction of motion. And x is your displacement. So that's, an, that's a more gener generic way to remember how to calculate uh, work. So I will end the video here and we can talk a little bit more about energy and work in our next video. Thank you.